I was born here in Dublin, um, lived all my life in Dublin. I was born in Hollis Street. We lived in Mount Street for the first three years of my life and then we moved to Merino. Fast forward then to 1976, we were living in Clondalk and we wanted to move house to another part of Clondalk. My son was seven at the time and uh, we wanted to keep him in the school there. And I knocked on a door down in a place called Newlands Drive and a little sign up about maybe seven inches by three inches um, said for sale, knocked on the door and the person who answered it was Jack Burkett, who I learned was the manager at the time of St. Pat's, was moving back to South End for coaching and was selling the house. I bought the house from Jack Burkett and we started coming down to the games and I've been coming to them ever since. I was a supporter for the first couple of years, then when Brian Kerr took over, um, he was looking for people to volunteer and I volunteered to become involved in the programme and uh, I've been doing that ever since. This area became available in a certain rearranging of the facilities here. I said, could I have it and I'll send up some programs to shop. And so it grew from there and people have gone, come to know it and they say, look, from time to time people, and I know the feeling, house full of programs, what will they do with them? Will you take them? I said, I will, of course. I'll never refuse anyone who wishes to because there will be something there for someone at some stage, maybe. And, uh, but as you can see, it's got bigger and bigger. And um, I'm, I think I'll have to put in for planning permission for an extension somehow. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a little Aladdin's cave, really, for anybody interested in books, sports books, publications, uh, programs, anything to do with the game. And people come from Germany, and I had one person from Norway who came in looking for an Aston Villa program, believe it or not, and I had one that had suited them. Whichever one it was, <laughs> I've been everywhere looking for one of these. So we got, but it's little things like that that make it. But I have programs here from all over, and um, even some from the, um, Faroe Islands. I had a couple here, yeah, Brian Kerr gave them to me. <laughs> yeah. And um, so that's how we do it and how we stock it. Then people come in with their programs and um, I exchange programs then with other people then with, who want to offload some of theirs and they take some of mine and so on. It was posted to me actually, retrieved in the program on the club, just gave it to me today when I arrived at the game. And it's Celtic versus Aberdeen Cup final from Saturday, 24th of April, 1937. It was priced at three old pence. And I would think that's very valuable at this stage. Match programs! Match programs! Well, I usually arrive here somewhere on, on the match day, half four, five o'clock, and um, try and do a bit of tidying if I can in the shop. and. Um, go up then, collect the programmes of the night and uh, the match, oh, the gates open at seven o'clock so I have a little stall outside um, which you might see and uh, I stand there during the start of the game. I know, I've, I've almost forgotten what the beginning of a game looks like and it's always nice to go to an away game where I can say, oh is that how a game starts? Oh, is that what they do? Because I, you know, I'm kidding of course. but. I, I want to give the customers as much satisfaction and service as possible that they'll go home and remember, yes, we got a good deal there. And then I'll go around the ground, even into the lion's den of the away end, um, to make sure that everybody does have at least an opportunity to have the programme. And if they don't want to buy it, that's okay, as long as they don't abuse me. But um, <laughs> that goes with the territory, I think, anyway. But. It's a, it's a labour of love really and it's, I think that if you're trying to sell something, no matter what it is, you've got to present it well and um, it's the same if you're working in Brown Thomas or where I used to work in Switzers, it's, it's Forerunner, um, you've got to do it well, as well as you can and then people will go away with a, a reasonably good feeling. To, it's, it's, an it's an additional service from a football club 
um, to people who are interested in doing things, and even to people who are not program collectors. They'd come in and say, oh, yeah, can I, oh there's a program, can you have a good program? Because somebody on you was playing in the game or something like that, I'd like to have a program about it. So I think it's just an additional service, another part for some people of the match day experience. I, I have a little bit of a, uh, it's not a mantra really, but it's a, a, a belief that those of us who are here now involved with the club are minding the club. That's all we're doing for this, for the future generations. Since 1929, there have been people here associated with it who have minded the club of St. Patrick's Athletic all through that time, through thick and thin, and it, we, it's our turn now, and younger people than I, it will be their turn very soon. But we have a duty to hand over a club that is respected, that is potentially successful in as many ways as possible, not least winning trophies, and will be mentioned with respect and with affection um, by future generations. If we leave that legacy, I think we'll have done a good job. Oh,